Is buying a co-op as an investment property a good idea in New York City? We'll demystify this topic in the following video. I'm Nick at Housett, based here in New York City. Visit Housett.com to learn how to save money if you're buying or selling a co-op, condo, or townhouse here in the Big Apple. So let's get started. Most buyers in New York City are attracted to co-ops because they're cheaper than condos. Now the main reason why co-ops are less expensive is because there's a much greater supply of them here in New York City. A co-op can be anywhere from 10 to 40% less expensive compared to an identical condo. Now this is great news for someone looking for a primary residence here in New York City. By choosing a co-op instead of a condo, you can live in the same size apartment but pay a lot less for it. Of course, there are many downsides to co-ops compared to condos, but that's a separate topic which we discuss in another video. So let's say you're an investor. You don't plan on living in the apartment, and as of now, you're also not fully familiar with the downsides of co-ops. As a result, you might be thinking that a co-op's lower purchase price will provide you with a higher yield compared to a condo. So shouldn't you and every other New York City real estate investor buy a co-op instead of a condo in order to obtain a higher rental yield? Well, the problem is that most co-ops in New York City are required to be used as primary residences. As a result, a typical co-op building has a limitation on the amount of subletting which is permitted. A co-op may only permit subletting for say two or three years out of every five years, and there could even be an initial occupancy requirement before subletting is permitted. This means that you as the owner would need to reside in the unit for a certain period of time before you're allowed to rent out the apartment. To make matters worse, stricter co-op buildings have a lifetime cap on the number of years of subletting during the course of ownership. For example, subletting may only be permitted for three years during the lifetime of ownership. And this prohibition makes it impossible for an investor to buy into the co-op building. This is because subletting restrictions are obviously a deal breaker for any investor who is naturally looking to rent out the apartment indefinitely in order to generate long-term cash flow. But here's where it gets interesting. There are a handful of co-op buildings in New York City which permit unlimited subletting. Therefore, some real estate investors in New York City end up considering and buying a co-op as an investment property. But is this actually a good idea? In our opinion, buying a co-op as an investment property is not a good idea, even if the specific co-op you're considering permits unlimited subletting. Here's why. Just because a co-op allows subletting today doesn't mean it will allow it in the future. The building could always change the policy. And this risk is particularly pronounced in a smaller building because all it could take is one or two new resales in the building to flip the co-op's culture and voting majority into opposing subletting. So let's say you're an investor and you buy an apartment in a small co-op building. Everything goes well for the first few years, but all of a sudden there are two resales in the building. The new owners are owner occupants and they're strongly opposed to investor activity in the building and subletting in general. Now let's say that one or both of these activist owners gets voted onto the board. Next thing you know, the building changes its policy and implements restrictions on subletting. If this were to happen, all investor owners in the building would essentially be required to sell over time. You might be allowed to continue subletting for some period of time as these new restrictions ease into effect, but ultimately you'll be required to sell. If all the investor owners start selling, this may put downward pressure on pricing in the building over time. But even if pricing in the building isn't meaningfully impacted by investors selling, this is a huge inconvenience for you as an investor. You'll eventually have to hire a broker, pay 6% commission, and swallow all other New York City seller closing costs, like city and state transfer taxes, and execute a 1031 exchange to buy a replacement investment property. Another major problem with owning a co-op as an investment property is the issue of board approval each time you have a new tenant. While both condos and co-ops in New York City usually have an extensive rental application and pretty high fees, co-ops are also allowed to reject the applicant without any consequences to the building. So if you irritate the board president or a board member, you could literally be dragged through the mud as these people engage in petty retaliation by rejecting your rental applicant or perhaps multiple applicants over time. The co-op board could also take ages to review the application, thereby prolonging the vacancy period and costing you real money. Condos, on the other hand, 
may not reject a rental applicant unless the building is actually willing to rent the unit from the owner on the same terms negotiated with the prospective tenant. This is called the right of first refusal. In New York City, the likelihood of a condo exercising this right is effectively zero, and it would only happen under extraordinary circumstances. Moreover, condo boards are usually required to respond to a renter's application within a set period of time, typically between 20 and 30 days. If the board does not respond within this time frame, the rental application is automatically approved. There is no such safety mechanism for co-op buildings. Before we let you go, we do want to emphasize that there are many real estate investors in New York City who own co-ops without any issue. It's absolutely possible to own a co-op as an investment property in New York City and be allowed to sublet immediately from day one without any limitation. The point of this video is to alert you of all the risks of buying a co-op apartment as an investment property. And admittedly, we've therefore focused on rather remote downside scenarios. In conclusion, we personally don't recommend buying a co-op as an investment property due to the additional risks involved compared to condo ownership. If we look at the big picture, the rental yields are still similar for condos and co-ops despite the pricing disparity. It's just not worth the extra risk or hassle to own a co-op just to receive a slight bump in the rental yield compared to a condo. If you want a significantly higher investment yield, it simply makes more sense to consider other asset classes or real estate in another city instead of taking on a lot of extra risk to earn a marginally higher yield by way of buying a co-op instead of a condo. We hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like, subscribe, and leave us a comment. We'd greatly appreciate it. I'm Nick at Housett, and we'll see you on the next video.